So now winter seems like it's finally here. The temperatures have dropped to say four, six degrees today. Um, it's been a very mild autumn. Hasn't really felt like autumn for me. The rivers have gone from being low and clear to now in the fields. Um, and myself and Ty had a chat on what we were gonna do next and we decided that we were gonna have a go on the commercials, local to us, for some perch. I'll go through some really simple tactics today over um, three or four different methods on how you can approach the commercial. This applies to any commercial where there's per oh. We seem to be getting a lot of that. We've got a bait in the water over there and I'm fishing a worm here. Yeah, so sorry, this, this, this will apply, what I tell you today will apply to any commercial uh, near yourself. A lot of these commercials have big perching. They don't really get fished for specifically. They get caught in matches and you hear about them. Um, and one of the most important things you can do for this to, to, to get yourself started is to speak to matchmen, come to a venue with some worms, just have a go, speak to the owners, speak to the matchmen and see where there's some big perch coming out. That's what we've done today. It's told us about three spots and three different pools. And um, we're trying to spot one today. We're gonna to be back over the next few sessions to try different areas and different methods. But so far today, we've had a couple, nothing of the size that we want, but we'll keep going and see if we can have some more. Right, it's by no means the size of what we came for, but it is a perch. Um, on the prawn, on the legend rig, it's, like I say, it's not anywhere near the size that we want, but it's a lovely little fish. Great bite with the bite alarm as well, ripping off. So we'll get this one back and I'll, uh, while the rod's out the water, I'll quickly show you what was used to catch this one and hopefully one of its bigger friends. So that first perch has just gone back had some littler ones on the flight, but nothing really worthy of showing to the camera. I'm going to go through quickly what we had it on. And this is my rig that I use on commercials for prawns, live baits, worms, um, even dead baits sometimes. But it's very, very simple. A quick running rig, but I'll go through it quickly with you. I've got a 12 foot Trilogy rod. This is the 1.75 tip on the end of this one. Um, stiff enough to handle big carp if we get a carp pick up a bait but not too soft um, when playing the bigger fish. The shadow reel that we've got on there, it's bait runner style, so we can leave that maybe in the next swim with the bait runner on. That's a three and a half thousand size, and that is loaded with eight pound mono. At the rig end, all very simple stuff. A running lead on one of the small run ring kits. That I think is a one and a half ounce lead on there. Two ounce, anything like that. Anything that's not gonna move. It's going to keep anchored to the deck when the fish takes the bait. You don't want the lead moving around because they will drop the bait. Rig sleeve. This is four pound hook link. No, sorry, this is six on this. Um, I probably wouldn't go much lighter than six, sometimes four, but in the depths of winter when the carp are less active. But again, if I hook a carp, it's beefy enough to be able to handle a carp. And that is a size four penetrator, micro barbed. And that's it. Prawn on there, worm on there, live bait, dead bait, whatever takes your fancy. Stick it in the margin. Again, open waters not to be ignored. that we're at today very kindly given us permission to come and have a go and come and do some filming it's manor farm leisure just outside of eversham in salford priors warwickshire it's a fantastic complex does big match weights for the match anglers the pole fishing the method fishing i think in total there's six pools here all together we're on windmill pool today 
some lovely features around here, some little willow trees, cut in bays, you can get out the wind or into the wind, wherever you want to fish. We had a walk around this morning. As I said earlier, we were given three, three areas to try and that, that information is valuable. Six lakes here, you know, we could be in completely the wrong place on the lake where there's not as many perch. So chatting to, to owners and, and anglers will get you some valuable information and you can get out and have a go for these commercial perch. It's not difficult. It's nothing out of the ordinary and you can have some really nice fish. One of the setups that I'm using today is a standard float setup. This is really, really basic stuff. I've got the 12 foot glide rod. I've got the Axis 3000 reel and that's loaded with the six pound glide float line. That's all the way through down to my hook. And on this venue and others, of course, I use the loaded blobs. This is a three gram loaded blob. Plumb the depth is normal, but it's self cocking, self weighted. Got a little BB dropper down the line and then a size six micro barbed penetrator. And that's it. Plumb the depth where I want to fish. Have it a little bit over depth. Dropper on the line. And it's as simple as that. Easily adjust the depth with these blobbers up and down. I'm not going to do it because I've just plumbed the depth, but that just slides up and down the line. Come in packs of three, really handy, especially on these commercials. You haven't got to mess about with float rubbers, threading, uh, threading floats and all sorts of jazz. And that's it. Big lob worm on that one. Can change it up to a prawn if I want. It's heavy in a float, but it's not too heavy that you won't catch any perch on it. Six pound line all the way through. Could be a bit heavy, but you can fish a four pound hook link. But while it's still quite warm like this, surprisingly warm, it's nearly December. There is a chance for big carp still, so you still want to be tackled up as much as you can to deal with those. We'll get this one back in and we're going to get the prawn rod back in as well. So it's the very next day, in true filming fashion, Ty came out with me, came out with me. We didn't do too well, but we had a few fish. But come out the next day, back to the same spot on this lovely fishery, and um, fish the same tactics. And this one took the float fish worm with the blob. 40, it's a long fish. It's 45 centimeters for the measurers, but it only went two pound four. So if it wants to behave, it's been rested ages. There it is. Lovely fish, as you can see, nice and long. These tactics on these venues really do work. Love the worm, over the chop worm, over the soil. Um, and with the cloud cover being completely different to yesterday, nice and bright, they've started feeding. So hopefully this is one of many today. I'm not here for much longer, but Get this one back, there's loads of rest. Yeah, lovely looking fish. See if it will play ball. Let me get that fin up. There we go. Look so angry with those fins up. Yeah, get this one back. See if we can have some more. So today is session number two of the commercial perch fishing campaign. We're back on this cracking fishery, Manor Farm in South of Rise. Oh, we're off. No. Um, the morning's been slow. Uh, it's got a lot colder, but it's still warm enough for the carp to be active. We've had a couple of F1s this morning and um, lots of 
little nibbles and pulls and tugs, but no perch just yet. Um, we're going to fish till about lunchtime on this lake, then we might move, move over onto another lake. There is a couple of matches on here today, but the complex is big enough for you to be able to find somewhere to fish. Very similar tactics again. Worm on the float with the blob. We've got a ledger rod on the alarms. That's had a prawn on this morning in a different swim and not had any joy. So we switched that over to a worm where I've threw a bit of bait in. But we both feel like, me and Ty both feel like there's too much food going in at the moment and there's too many carp about. So we're going to try something a bit different later on. Um, single hook baits, not a lot of food going in. And see if today can be better than uh, the last session. We've got a couple more days, so fingers crossed. With the weather cooling this week, the carp should switch off. Hopefully we can catch some perch. So in brief, we're gonna go over what we use on the commercials for the perch. Um, it's nothing groundbreaking. It's not really anything new, but what I've got here should, if there's perch in the venue, catch you some, along with other fish as well. We'll go into more detail later on about the time of year we choose to fish um, for these perch to avoid the carp. But um, at the moment, we'll go through the bait very quickly. Maggots. Just some mixed maggots. Um, if you can, if you're allowed to, and, and you want to use live baits on the venue, use your mixed maggots, some whites, some reds, some pinks. They'll help you catch some little roach or bleak. Red maggots, always a perch fisherman's favorite. I've got these maggots, I bought them yesterday, and I've put some method mixing with them. A Little bit of added flavor, but it helps keep them dry when I'm storing them overnight. Um, but they're nice and uh, dusted. And sometimes I'll sieve them off, but a lot of the time I'll chuck in that that uh, mix as well, all added food. Some casters, another good one. Not many of these, I mix these in with like a ground bait mix that I'm gonna show you in a minute. But again, good perch bait. And of course, the old faithful, the old lobworms, big lobworms. They seem to be getting more and more expensive, so I was raiding the garden last night for some of these. And then prawns as well. A lot of people that fish for the perch and the commercials use the prawns, cooked or uncooked. I don't seem to have a preference, it's just whatever I can get. So some commercial venues, they're, um, they're not too keen on you using um, ground baits. Some, very rare. Um, but if there is a ground bait ban on the venue, there isn't here, but I like to use this as a, as a carrier anyway. It's molehill soil. Um, lots of natural food sources in here have been brought up through the ground through moles. Um, it clouds up the water lovely, and it's used more than anything as a carrier, but there are food sources in there. So I'm gonna go through quickly how I mix up my ground bait mix for my two different methods. Small handful of reds, some mixed. It's really just a bit of everything. As I said earlier, it's nothing groundbreaking. It's not something that you won't have seen before, but it works. Bit of everything in there. A Couple of the smaller worms that are probably too small for the hook. Chop those up, throw those in. Now this, I will fish a prawn over the top of this and I'll fish my lobworm over the top of this. Um, sometimes I'll add a bit of chopped prawn as well on the prawn rod, but sometimes I feel like the prawns can be too much food. So I want them taking that hook bait as opposed to getting full on big bits of prawn in my mix. So I'm gonna give that a bit of a mix. If it's a bit dry, you can add a bit of water from the venue, but that should, as it is, bind together lovely. And that gets to the bottom of the lake where you want it, you can. Um, bomb it out or just hand it out in a margin. I tend to fish the margins when I'm fishing for the perch. Open water is, is not to be ignored, but here I'll fish in the margins. Prawn over the top, worm over the top. It's good stuff. And that's it. As I say, nothing groundbreaking. Yes, just in the kicker. Happy days. So it finally paid off. The cloud covers come in. It's bright this morning. We didn't have much joy. A lot of liners from the carp and a lot of carp. We finally had one. 
Not a giant giant, but a lovely commercial perch. Two pound, four ounces. This one took the uh, float fish worm, as you saw. Oh, it's got a fin up, always like looking at the fins. Lovely. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, get, oh, we'll get this one back. We've only got probably another half an hour, 40 minutes, but it's nice to have another one. Same weight as the one last week. With this cloud cover coming in, it's definitely made a difference. Good old broad shoulders on him. Big old gob. Yeah, lovely. We should get him back and have another. Another one as great as the net. It's not as big this one, but it's still a nice commercial perch, very lively. An upper, high upper one. You see here my alarm in the background probably. The prawns started to come to life, they're working. Yeah, we'll get this one back and fish just into dark until the fishery closes and hopefully we can have a bigger one. But we're not being greedy, the 2-4 was lovely. The smashing condition really, a little bit of a mark on this one here, but not grumbling. Oh, it's come off. Probably about a pound, pound and a bit. Nothing huge again, but pristine condition here. We'll just put this one straight back. <laughs> All this swim into the net. And backflip out. There he goes. So that was a, a mad 10, 15 minutes, as always with the commercial perch fishing, I've found that towards the end of the day, as the light starts to fade, or indeed if you're fishing in a day that's really cloudy, um, the action can be good. Um, we've had the bigger one on the worm, on the float, as you saw, and then we've had a couple of smaller ones on the prawn, on the ledger. So both methods have, have really worked on this lake today. And it just goes to show a, a change in days, move on to a different lake. One of the things, um, that's been really key um, on this campaign is speaking to match anglers and speaking to the owner. We came this morning and I noticed one of my friends was here um, in a match and we spoke to him about where there might be some fish coming out, where the fish are showing. Spoke to the owner who are obviously seeing fish coming out all the time and it's, it's priceless information. Um, we could be on the completely the wrong lake and completely the wrong section but we've, we've done our homework. Uh, it's good to know, good to get that information. We've come where they said there'd be fish and, and lo and behold, there has been fish. But the light's fading now. We're gonna crack on, another big worm's going out and hopefully we can have another one before the end of the session. But even if we don't, it's been fantastic. So we'll crack on just before dark and see if we can have another. literally just about to reach up this one because it had done nothing 
and it ripped off as I put my hand on the rod. I actually thought it was me setting off the alarm. But no. Wah! That's all right, you know? I don't think it's quite as big as the last one, but it's got a decent frame on it. Let's get it on the mat. Again, just goes to show the uh, end of the day. See the sun going down behind me is when it can all kick off. And I was just about to reel in my ledger prawn and I knocked the rod thinking, when the alarm went off, thinking it was me and then the bobbin shot up and this one was on the end. So another two. Happy with this one. Oh, he's got angry. A bit missing in his door, so what? Such a long fish as well, 42 centimeters for the for the measurers. But I think that's going to be all for today and all for this uh, commercial perch fishing campaign. Managed to put ourselves on some fish, not the three or the the massive one that we wanted, but you can't grumble at fish like this. Prawns and worms, float rod, ledger rod. We were going to fish the quiver tip, never got round to it, but another simple tactic you can use for them. So we we'll get this one back wrap up and get out before the gates locked.